Now it's part four uh, in this version, read by the author. I'm claiming that denial of death is, uh, it's to not write your memoir, it's the denial of death. Uh, the book, The De Denial of Death, by Ernest Becker, suggests that the denial of death is the most fundamental problem of mankind. I remember Woody Allen bringing this book for his girlfriend in the film with Annie Hall. In the year 1977, when this film came out, I was just beginning my exercises in meditation to die daily. The other reason to write this memoir is that one does not know the hour of the day when the end shout could come. So when would I do it? <laughs> How much weakened would my memory be before I start? Not gonna do it, huh? To meditate, you have to live in the present. So that means you must forget the past and forget the future. This means I cannot think that I will have some time to write my memoirs in the future. All right. I'm not allowed to assume there's any more time left. And Tukaram, we bring in an expert here. Tukaram, he says, he says, I stick in my, his hand, Tuka chases his own corpse. He takes it to the crematorium where bodies are laid to burn. He punishes it for its past deeds. He fears nothing for God can take all Pleasure and pain, that is why I am determined to make such a clean exit. Says Tuka, it is healthier to die than to have a body to be punished. <laughs> there we brought in an expert. <laughs> now, is there a more perfect time or more perfect version? Will there ever be something perfect? I think not. This kind of thinking leads to nothing, no memoir. Well, how, if God is perfect, how can you? I waited until my Maybe piano piece, they, if I God, waited, how can you say dear, if I waited until my piano pieces were perfect to record them, <laughs> then I would have no recordings. Uh -huh. <laughs> so that's why you record everything. That's why I record them with all the mistakes. Uh -huh. I practice, dear. <laughs> you so early, right? <laughs> but I'll say you you record too soon now. This is the earliest new <laughs> Now I only do a, a one or two run throughs and then record immediately. That's why they're so bad. <laughs> and any recording I had would be dull after over practicing as the life went out of them. When you over practice, they lose their. Uh, there. Actually, I hate over practice pieces. That's where the secret is. Oh, I, I hate them. I hate them over practice. They sound you horrible. You exhaust yourself, but then you produce your best. You get you get tired and bored of the piece before you're ready to record it. It doesn't have to be the same. I'm afraid. Uh, Suppose it's different. There's another reason besides the bit about being ready for death. You should actually begin to end attachment to the world for when you do leave. Like the Tibetan Book of the Dead concept of net reincarnating again at death. This is done by finishing your involvement and not being overly attached to your earthly life. In his book, Spiritual Awakening, Darshan Singh wrote a chapter called The Final Chapter of Transmigration. It makes an interesting read as it spells out what is actually to happen in the final incarnation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think this is Tuca now. We bring in an expert, Tuca. Who are the children there? Not you. That sometimes sometimes so one. Time. I'm reading from Tuca. Once, sometimes one must let one's life flow like water, finding its way. Sometimes one may lie in a bed of luxury. Sometimes one has to become what time demands of one. Sometimes it is a gourmet's feast laid out. Sometimes we have gourmet feast and breakfast, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes right. stale crumbs for sheer survival. Sometimes one travels in a comfortable vehicle. Sometimes one goes barefoot all the way. Sometimes one gets to wear the choicest garments. Sometimes one has to wear tattered clothes. Sometimes one has all the wealth in the world. 
Sometimes one has uh, to brave dire straits. Sometimes one meets saintly people. Don't you have to take an approval to write that one? one Sometimes one has to suffer the company of villains. What, you're quoting from somebody? You don't quote, you have the whole point. Though. Says Tuca, know it well. Well, it's cite citation. I, th I think you can cite things, dear. Mm -hmm. I don't need permission. Do you have it at, at the acknowledgments at the end? Well, there's footnoted in now. It just says, Tuca knew it well. Joy and sorrow must equal on one scale. Look, there's a footnote here. Tuca says, translated, gives the author, gives the book. It's cite Penguin Classics. See? Mm -hmm. It's called a footnote. Tuca tried to copy it? No Maybe you should uh, find out by write it, by trying it. <laughs> In addition to this memoir, I've collected my poetry and published it on CreateSpace, but Amazon. There it is. Mm -hmm. This is Smiling Whiteness, the poetry of David R. Smith. Okay, I am titling the memoir Six, memoir to 60 rather than my autobiography because there is a risk that I might live longer. Hmm. On the other hand, there is a risk that I will not live longer, but if I do live longer, I believe it is a productive to assume that I will not. Plus, believe in a sort of human error model of thinking humans. Humans are wired erroneously to calculate the time it takes to do this and always misestimate time travel. Thus, I believe to eat only half full, one has to eat only quarter full. To meditate accurately for three hours, one has to meditate for six to get to a destination on time. One has to get at an extra half hour. Likewise, if you think you will live to 90, then it might only be to 60. Hmm. Hmm. Do you think you're going to live to 90, dear? Then how well, long are you going to live? Mm -hmm. I don't want 90. Hmm. 80 should be okay. Mm. I'm going to end this reading as part four. We are talking about the denial of death and Woody Allen. We are reading from part four, the chapter on denial of death. With the movie with Annie Hall featured and, and Tuca, he was featured in as a consultant. Uh -huh. uh.